Hey everyone, welcome back to another Polybridge 2 video. In this video, what I'm going to be making is a car in Polybridge. Now, I know this car is already in Polybridge, but I'm going to be making one out of the bridge materials. So, yeah, let's get right into it. Alright, well, first thing you want to do, get in the sandbox, make a custom level. And you see what I'm doing is combining the two levels, or the two sides, um, together. And it's because there's going to be no need for a bridge here, considering the bridge is the car. And now I'm adding in a bunch of hydraulic phases, and I have a hydraulic here. And you see how this is going to move in and out repeatedly. And this linear motion, the goal is to convert that into rotational motion that I can drive the car with. So now what I'm adding in is a bunch of platforms. And these are just going to be to test, like, a couple engine designs. And it makes it far easier than trying to, you know, start out with a car. But once I have it working, I will convert it to a car. So that's why I'm doing it this way. All right, now with that in place, I'm adding back in the piston. And you see it's doing what it did before, it just expands and contracts, which is perfect. So now I'm adding in the wheel, and this is what it's actually going to be rotating. So you see I'm making that here, now I'm making it look a little bit more wheel-like. I'm adding in the hydraulic, and you can see it makes it move almost 45 degrees. But this isn't quite what we want, in fact it needs to rotate 180 degrees each rotation. So I try this with a diamond hydraulic, but it didn't quite get where I wanted it to be. So now what I'm adding in is a hydraulic pushing directly down on the wheel. And this is bad, because it technically is infinite stress with no torque, so the wheel shouldn't move. The only reason it does is because Polybridge isn't perfect. But you see here, I get a reciprocating motion, because as the hydraulic reaches the apex of the wheel, it's allowed to continue over in the direction it was before. You see that 100% stress there. So now I'm fixing the wheel so that it's as big as the hydraulic expands, and you see I can actually get a full rotation out of it. And this is exactly what I needed. This is really the first step in creating an engine. But I still need to fix that 100% stress problem. And to do that, I'm going to be using these two springs. What they do is, as they compress, it allows the wheel to bias slightly. You see how they compress there. And this fixes that problem of where it initially puts a ton of stress on the wheel, because it's allowed to move a little bit. So this is good, so the next thing to do is add in the wheel. This is what the tire is actually going to be based off of. So I'm connecting it with a 4 bar linkage. The idea is any rotation by the engine has to be transferred to the wheel. I won't go into too much depth on this, but if you want to see a full video on it, you can click the card on screen now. Alright, so now I'm adding in a bigger tire, and the idea here is that I'll get more rotation, well, I'll get more distance out of um, a single rotation. And after strengthening up the arch a bit more, you can see what I'm getting here. This was awesome, and I figured it was close enough I could probably start basing a car off of it. So I decided to, well, just go for that. So after deleting the platforms, getting this close to the ground, it was time to start making the tire. And I'm doing that here with an octagon sort of shape out of roads. And there's not a lot of segments here, so it's going to be a pretty bumpy ride, but it should be enough to get the point across. You see that's working here, and the hydraulics having a fun time. So now it's time to add in that back wheel. So after measuring a bit with some diamond pieces of steel, you see I put that in, and well, they fall together in unison. So with those wheels in place, now it's just time to support everything. So I'm adding in some diamond pieces of steel, and what these are going to do is, well, make the engine not fall over anymore. But things don't go as well as I thought they would. Well, I guess I kind of had a feeling this would happen. Basically, it takes a ton of force to start the engine because it has to push those springs down, which stresses everything out. You can see how everything is red here in unbreakable mode, which means it would be breaking normally. So that's not good. But worse yet, the engine doesn't even work. The problem is that the wheel sort of stops it from rotating fully, so it can't overcome that bottom apex, and it just rotates back to where it came from. So my first thought is, well, maybe I can make some smaller wheels and this would solve the problem. It should take less force to rotate a smaller wheel, so I thought it had a decent shot at working, and if it didn't work, I was just going to make a new design anyways. So here I'm adding in both of those sides, and after not setting the hydraulic correctly. But even after fixing the hydraulic and adding back in the 4-bar linkage, you see I'm still getting that same problem. It just rotates back and forth on, well, in the same way, instead of doing a full rotation. So this isn't what I want, so I decide after quite a few revisions that it just isn't going to work. So now I'm going back to some platforms because I have a new design for an engine that I think might work a bit better. The idea is it's going to be sort of a trade-off. One hydraulic is going to push the wheel, and then as it gets to its apex, another hydraulic is going to latch on and push the wheel another, well, 90 degrees or so, and then the initial hydraulic is going to grab the wheel again and push it. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. But the first step is getting 90 degrees of movement out of one hydraulic. So see, after a bit of tuning, I end up getting that here. And that was pretty good, so now I just needed to add that to the bottom. So you can see how both hydraulics are expanding. And this is what we want, but we don't want them expanding at the exact same time. We want them alternating. So it's time to add in some split joints that they can let go and grab onto the wheel when they're supposed to. So you see also I'm adding in some ropes. And the idea here is that the hydraulic will stay in place even when it's not grabbed onto the wheel. 
otherwise it would just fall straight to the ground. So now with both the ropes in place, and with the hydraulics expanding and contracting at the right times, you can see what we got here. It's sort of this alternating motion. So now it's just time to mess with the split joints a bit. So you see, my first few attempts were a little bit successful, but they failed pretty quickly. But after not too long, I ended up figuring out the pattern to make these work, and you see, I actually got the full rotation out of this. And with the engine built now, really it's just time to make the car. So you see I'm deleting the platforms because we really didn't need them. I mean, we only needed them for testing, we really don't need them for the car. So I'm rotating the engine 45 degrees. It's gonna work the same, but it's just easier to mount in the car when it's not at an extreme angle, it won't be as tall. Overall, it's just easier. And I'm adding in the wheels again. I'm using eight-sided wheels for now. Eventually they're gonna be 12 sides, but the eight sides are just easy to work with. And you see there, sort of rolls. It's good enough. So now I'm adding both of those wheels in, and I'm positioning the engine right in between them, and I'm using a diamond piece of steel to connect the wheels together. So you see they roll in unison now. And now I just want to connect the center point of the engine to the wheels. This just to make it a static point so that it can rotate around it, and you see it works there. And then I'm just going to connect the hydraulics so that they have a point to grab onto. I'm also adding a structural piece above the engine. This is to give a spot for those ropes to attach to and also just strengthens the car a bit more. So you see that works, but I didn't have the ropes pin, so I'm adding the ropes in right now. But the issue is, the ropes aren't exactly in the best spot, and as it rotates, it actually pulls the rope too much and snaps it. So the rope snaps, I guess I should have expected that. But then I get this insane luck. The hydraulic swings all the way back, and then swings forward again, reconnects perfectly with the engine, and pushes it forward another stroke. I've I don't know how this happened. It didn't work twice, it almost did, but that was just crazy. But it was still a failure, but it was an interesting failure, so I decided to show it. I'm replacing the ropes with springs. You can see they get the exact same job done. I'm moving the tires closer into the engine so that I can use the four bar linkage to connect them before the steel wouldn't reach. So you see I have that in here, and I'm also moving in the front wheel too. And unfortunately it drops a little bit too far, so it smashes the wheels. So after repositioning it a little bit, you can see I get something a little bit better, but the front wheel still like to smash, which was a little bit annoying. So I decided to make it fully springs, just for fun, and you see it works, it actually holds itself up pretty well. But it sort of just drags on the ground, I can only assume it's not getting good traction, even though I think it would. So I decided to go back to the rigid design, and I see, even though it doesn't smash itself anymore, it's still just dragging on the ground. So my solution was to make an all-wheel drive vehicle. So that's what I'm adding in here with all these linkages, and you can see it actually moves much better than it did before. So the next thing I wanted to do is just, well, add more land for it to drive across. So that's what I'm doing in the editor, I'm adding in these little sections. And you can see now it has much more room to move. So you can see it's moving pretty well, but now what I wanted to do is fix the wheels. Because it seemed like it was about time to go from the 8-sided to the 12-sided wheel. This should make it not bounce as much, and also should make it a bit stronger. You can see here how much better the back wheel is traveling the front wheel, and the front of the car keeps bouncing up and down, the back of the car is pretty level. So now I'm deciding to make the front wheel also a 12-sided shape, and you see here the car is traveling much better than it did before. I didn't really know what I wanted to do with the car at this point, so I decided to try towing a little pickup truck I made with it, and it doesn't quite have the power to do it. Most of the pickup truck's wheels don't want to rotate for some reason, but the front of the car also, once it got over that gap, just sort of smashed the wheel. So that didn't work out too well, but I thought maybe you could do some hills, see what it could accomplish there. So now I'm going for some one high gaps in the beginning, two high in the middle, and a couple three high gaps at the end. So you can see here the engine just sort of failed for no reason. And I guess it does make a bit of sense. If you see here, the last stroke, the engine gets pushed forward, and then the back hydraulic misses the engine. And the front hydraulic, you can see, also would have missed it. And this is just because of the way the car was sloped, it was messing with the way it was grabbing the engine. So after making the springs attached to the center point instead of the top and the bottom of the engine, you see I get much better lineups. And this was pretty much the solution. You see the car kind of falls apart. Ended up being you could just use steel here, you didn't even need springs. And once I added that, the car was a bit better. So now I'm fixing everything, instead of a one high, then two high, then three high slopes, it's all two high, except the last one is three high. And now it's time to add some cargo as well. So I added in this little guy, and what he's gonna do is just ride the car up, and, well, he's gonna hit the checkpoint at the end and <laughs> beat the level. Because before this, there's been no real goal. So I added him in, he's just gonna follow along. You see he's just getting held in the middle, and now it's time for his journey to the top.
and you can see he hits the flag, beats the level. So everyone, if you like the car, make sure to like the video, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of this content, and yeah, until next time.